Last night, a fourth night of violence was concentrated in cities in northern England. As police try to stop it, they are getting some help that they really don't want. CBS News correspondent Mark Phillips is in London with the latest. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Rebecca. Well, despite the post-riot look to parts of London, businesses are trying to repair and some of them actually to reopen. But in a very worrying incident last night, three men were actually killed as they tried to defend their property in the face of other potential rioters. Uh, they were in a, in a South Asian area of town and it's become a really worrying twist to this story. There's been a new and worrying reaction to the wave of looting and burning across Britain. Vigilantism. We're the Enfield anti-rioting squad. In several areas around the country, local citizens have organized their own protection against the rioters. In this South Asian area of London, local shopkeepers and others came out into the street to defend their businesses, homes and temples against potential attack. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters come together with us and say, let's solve out the problems without undue violence and causing distress to each other, which then takes it onto a further level, causing further violence and distress. The same thing happened in North London, where a large warehouse had been burned to the ground. Here, people organized themselves into patrols while complaining that police hands were tied. There's a growing backlash to what is seen as two soft police tactics. I've got, you know, back the police up 100%. Their hands are tied by left-wing lunacy civil rights laws. Simple. A right-wing reaction is developing and groups like the English Defence League are moving in. The police are unable to control the streets. Today, these are local people, not EDL. These are patriots who have come out to defend their area. The rioting kids, at least some of them, describe their motivation in terms of economic disadvantage. There's no employment, I can't get a job or nothing, and they just think the best way, why not make quick money? But these riots, already ugly, have a potential to turn into something even nasty. The fear is that the riots are exposing huge social, economic, and even racial gaps, and that the longer they go on, the more worrying that gets. Chris? CBS is Mark Phillips in London. Mark, thank you. And the unrest in Britain is being aided by technology with flash mobs being organized through popular websites. It's a growing phenomenon that has its pros and its cons, as CBS News correspondent Randall Pinkston reports. As the riots in England set parts of the country burning, authorities say social media is fanning the flames. It began after Mark Dugan was shot and killed by police. A memorial Facebook page quickly went up, and 15 minutes later, there was this post. Please upload any pictures or videos you may have from tonight in Tottenham. Share it with people to send the message out as to why this is blown into a riot. It was a call to arms that has now erupted for four days. Rioters and looters taking to the streets. Instant messages typed on blackberries began to fly, in effect, organizing the chaos. Everyone from all sides of London meet up at the heart of London. Oxford Circus, one read. Bear shops are going to get smashed up, so come get some free stuff. It's a dark side to social media, which was praised last spring for its role in fueling the popular uprising in Egypt and across the Middle East. Generically speaking, the Arab Spring and the London Summer are identical. You have disenfranchised youth uh, using tools uh, of the trade, things they carry in their pocket, and spontaneously erupting into one thing or another. In this country, we typically think of flash mobs as something unsuspecting and entertaining, like groups suddenly busting out dance moves and bathing suits. Or breaking out in song. But increasingly, internet-organized mobs have turned ugly. This is a flash mob, or flash rob, as it has come to be known, with the group robbing a Sears store just outside Philadelphia in June. Social media can even be unintentionally disruptive. A recent incident in which a Los Angeles DJ attempted to organize a party turned ugly when police were called in to break it up. Technology is amoral. It's agnostic to its use. Um, it's the use that people put to it that is at issue. Whether it be used for dancing, democracy, or just plain destruction. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, New York.